So, I'm allowed to tell you guys this. A little while back, I got to participate in a virtual set visit for the new Scream movie. And it was pretty much just do an interview you want. on Zoom, but yeah. because it, Kevin Williamson posted about the title, the rap, and those images, we were allowed to unveil one interview we did that day, which is the, the filmmaking team, Radio Silence, and one of the producers from Project X. So there's a lot to dig into here. I posted the full interview on Collider, but I broke out one particular story because it just really caught my eye. It was actually from the very end of the uh, of the conversation. And someone, because it was a group interview, someone had asked them about creating, uh, creating their death scenes because Scream has so many iconic ones. So, you know, how do you, how do you uh, figure out the right combination between your own creativity and uh, ones that are inspired by the original kills? So... They basically, you know, talked about how iconic those were and how much they're they're really uh, putting into making sure that they knock it out of the park in that respect. So they talked pretty extensively about the importance of having characters that you love in the middle of these scenarios, which makes sense. That adds a significant amount of weight to a kill scene. But the part that I found most interesting was when someone said this is the lead in at least they were they were also talking about how some of your favorite scream kills are likely very clean clear and simple ideas for example saying oh the garage door oh the sound booth oh the two-way mirror you know what i mean so they're keeping that in mind but then and i believe it was matt who said this of radio silence he said and one of the things we got from watching a million Wes Craven interviews is how he was always so clear about you can't have fun with watching someone die. It has to always be that's a human being going through something horrible. And if it's anything other than that, it becomes farcical and it becomes funny. And that's yeah. great in some other franchises. Final D comes to mind where it's like, that's what it is. Scream is not that. Scream has to still be about real people. And I think that's one of the lessons we got from Wes Craven that has just guided us every step of the way through this. I understand where he's coming from. I understand where he's coming from, but, but. When, I, when, I think, when I think about a lot of my favorite slasher franchises in general, it's a, it's a very difficult thing to describe because I, I don't necessarily think it like my enjoyment is coming from having fun watching people die. I think there's a very big difference between having fun and entertainment cool. value. And, yeah. and I, I just hope it's a balance of, of, you know, feeling the peril and really caring about the characters with that ingenuity and entertainment level. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, I, I understand the quote completely because yeah. this isn't Friday the 13th or this isn't, especially like if we're talking Craven, this isn't nightmare on Elm street. These movies aren't here. Let's put it this way. The screen movies to me, I remember the chases more than the kills. The kills actually don't stick with me. It's everything that leads up to the kill that I remember so vividly, like mm. anyone running through a house. And like, I feel like scream is so good at setting up the slasher death. And I'm not saying the deaths are not iconic. I'm not saying that they fail, okay. but I love the pursuit in the screen movies. That is my favorite part. And I think that plays into kind of what they're saying because that's the emphasis that I see. The emphasis isn't on a Nightmare on Elm Street movie where the deaths are the big point. Like Freddy Krueger gets to do whatever he wants in Dreamland. So he gets to eat meatballs with people's heads on them or stuff their faces to like bursting and then they explode. Like stuff like that is bonkers, but you're playing in a fantasy world where you're trying to go over the top and you're trying to do that kind of stuff. Scream was never about that. Scream is all grounded. So I feel like it's going to be brutal. I feel like the kills are going to be uh, gory as heck. But even think about Ready or Not. Like like you said before in your interview, just talking to them, uh, like I read parts of it. And this is very much going to be their Ready or Not meets Scream because Ready mm -hmm. or Not was already so much Scream. And the deaths were brutal. The deaths, you know, the maids alone. The maids alone getting just slaughtered yeah. was like some pretty graphic stuff. But it doesn't stick with you in the same way because you're not remembering the most violent thing you've ever seen you're not you're remembering everything that kind of led up to it but in the screen movies you are remembering everything that led up mm -hmm. to it so i think it'll be a marriage i think it'll be a marriage of that 
I hear I hear that. I think I'm just very hung up on on the use of of the word fun. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I know what they meant because well, yeah, when, no, I know. Look at I it know. like. I know what they meant also, but like, you yeah. know, me and the Final Destination franchise also. And the second that that franchise was name dropped, I again, I like 100 yeah. percent get what he's going for. And he's not yeah. wrong because Final Destination is all about these extremely outrageous kills and watching them happen step by step by step. Maybe sometimes more so than caring about the character. But I still don't think that descriptor applies to every Final Destination death. No, but again, in the sense of the movie world, those deaths are played for fun. You, like you just said, you don't care about some of the characters because you are just there to see how they die because that's not, how those not all of them, though. Like I'm, I'm sitting here and I'm going, I'm going through. Let's all right. Let spoiler alert for the first Final Destination. Let's go through some of the kills in that movie. For first, after the plane, at least, and also like the plane is vicious. There, there's literally, fucking, it is literally nothing. Fun about that plane scene no that is not fun think about the next death todd in the shower it is vicious and extremely upsetting and you care about todd as a good friend and then who 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 comes after todd is that already the teacher is that that is that miss luton i haven't seen the first in a while the the sequels i've seen much more that is if that is the next one her death is also especially brutal and she is a very emotional character. So I think that part of that brutality and the success of it comes from the fact that you are emotionally attached to what she values and the trauma she just went through. So here's what I'll say. I think when people talk about the Final Destination movies, they're thinking more of the more recent ones because that's when death just gets bonkers and is like doing like Rube Goldberg machines just to kill people. Where the first one, it's much more of a slasher film than people remember. It's it's actually like pretty straightforward. Like Sean William Scott just dies because what is it? The train kicks a, like a yeah, train his way, yeah, yeah. and it like decapitates him. So like that stuff is all pretty, pretty brutal and vicious. It's not until you get into the sequels when they realize, oh, people just kind of want to see some wild ass deaths. That's so fair. let's have a car engine go into someone's no. head and chew it out and stuff like that. We do not speak of the final destination. Seriously, when I'm having like a franchise wide conversation, I, I'm seriously plucking number four out of my brain for the sake of that. But going to let's say number five, um like the death in the in the massage parlor, that that's silly shit. Like I'll, silly shit. It's it's I'll silly. Break, I'll break on that one, but you know. Like even when you think about something as uh, as wild as the gymnastics death, there still is like a a real like meanness and a and a, a very like, there is there is rounded quality to that. Like I said, when you use the word fun, we know the movies that he's talking about. It's that you don't have to worry about that yeah, being yeah. scored. You don't oh, you yeah. don't have to worry about that overtaking. They already showed in Ready or Not they can do the vibe, and Scream is going to be there more even more serious take on that kind of vibe. I got, I just got very intense about that. If you I couldn't. saw that you, you literally just went on a tangent. You, like, <laughs> I like, you know, I like, seriously, two of my favorite horror franchises of all time are scream and final destination. Anyway, what do you think about the title of the movie? Cause I know, I think I saw some very heated tweets about it. And even yeah. though scream is my favorite horror franchise of all time and scream is my second favorite movie of all time. I wasn't I wasn't offended in any sense by them just calling this scream. What's the big deal? I'm not offended by it. Here here's my take on it. I I don't care in some regards, but then also why why are you doing it cuz you're just setting yourself up for comparisons? All you're doing is naming your movie scream and asking people to now put it against the the first scream. Like the, at the same titles, people are going to confuse it as a reboot. Like, there's all these things that you've introduced now just by calling it Scream, where I don't care personally, but you could avoid so much discourse just by not using the same name. Okay. I, I don't know why we have to duplicate. So I have a question for you. Did you or did you ever see anyone else do that with the new Halloween movie? Because I, I honestly, I didn't. Maybe not. Maybe that's a good point. Uh, when Halloween came out, I think... I, I think there was a little discourse around like, why I mean, are we just calling it Halloween? But that's maybe when they first announced it. But I feel like once the movie was here, 
I, I just, I don't know. I never really, I never had a problem with it. I never saw it confuse anyone. I didn't see any of the conversations specifically going towards, well, because it's called Halloween, let's compare it to the original. You know what I mean? It, that's fair. I'm just trying to think of things that are wrong with it. And again, I just think it's, yeah. an, like it, you're well, inviting, you're inviting things when you know you can get around it. Um, okay. I, again, so, I just. So if, if that, let's say that is the case, they're inviting things they're inviting some challenging things where by picking another name, they could have gotten around it. That's one, that's one corner. What if in the other, it's this mentality of if we call it scream five, we might alienate some moviegoers out there who are maybe new to the franchise and won't watch it because they think they're four movies behind. I, I mean, I don't, that hasn't stopped. I think we, I think the same argument comes out. How, when has that ever stopped another franchise? When have we seen that with another franchise where five movies in people are well, like, oh. I think it depends what franchise we're talking about. But I think that many, I mean, I can't pull examples off the top of my head right now, but we can okay. talk about a million that have diminishing returns as they go on. So here's one, Bride of Chucky. Like you have a sequel that gets announced years after the first one. It's a it's a complete uh, like turn for the franchise, and you call it something completely different, so that people kind of know what they're getting into versus using the same name again and just kind of like rebooting things in a way. I like I'm I'm trying to figure think of franchises you're, where you're suggesting that Scream should have taken a Bride of Chucky spin on the title for the fifth film. Possibly, yeah. I, I think you do yeah. something and just say like. Because that would also like fit the screen mentality in a way of just okay. we're we're at our fifth movie, so now now is the time when we go bonkers. Like they just call it like fucking ghost face goes to space or some shit because it's like that's where they are right now, and they, he doesn't have to. It's just something dumb. But ghost face X. God, don't don't you don't you bring up Jason X? You know <laughs> you don't you don't want me to go on a tangent there. Yeah, yeah. All right, we got a, a super chat from Steven. Hey, Steven. How you doing, man? Um, Urban Legend. Steven, are you referring to Fun Kills? I haven't rewatched Urban Legend in forever. I just rewatched Urban Legend. You know, I, it, it just hit Shudder and I rewatched it. I almost, there was a reason why I almost watched the Urban Legends sequel recently. Like, was there a, was there a weird sequel? I'm pretty sure, yeah. I think I interviewed someone who was in it and, it and I up. almost purposely watched it because I wanted to, like, bring it up. Hold on, I'm I'm on the page right now. I can it. figure it out in a heartbeat, or maybe I can't. I might be lying. Yeah, urban oh, urban legend is uh is some I find it <laughs> some silly silly ridiculousness, but it's it's kind of the good kind. I it's I can't I can't remember. Was it is it Kate Mara? Was she in an urban legend? Chat movie? yes, Chapman just said Mark Chapman just said Kate Mara's in one. That's yeah, that's definitely yeah. why I had uh, I had yeah, Urban Written it down. Bloody Mary. I almost watched it, but I didn't. Um, do we want to pick another section of the scream thing? There's so much here. Like to. There's so much here, and I can't wait until I can tell you more, also. Oh, they're they're doing uh they're basically taking a play out of Wes Craven and Kevin Williamson's playbook, and they're not revealing the ending to the actors, which is yeah. interesting. I understand why they're doing it. What else do we got here? Oh, there was a bit here. I know what I'm looking for. It's a spark. Um, we all know that the screen movies have that meta nature to them. And if you think about it, the horror genre was in a very different place when the 1996 movie came out compared to where the genre is today. So when we asked about tapping into current uh, trends, Matt had said, the movie has a lot to do with the current state of horror. But one of the things we talked about is that unlike when the original started and horror was sort of on a downward path and it wasn't that popular anymore, people outside of the mainstream were still into it, but the mainstream had given up on horror. That's not where we're at now. Obviously, horror is as big as anything right now. And so it's fun to go at it from that angle. But also at the same time for us, scary is scary. And it always will be. If something's truly scary, it's just going to be effing scary. And that's our, why did I bleep myself? Fucking scary. Good, good censorship. Good censorship. <laughs> All right. 
All right. But that is, um, it's an inch, it's not, you know, the most revealing about the story or anything, but it's an interesting thing to consider because I feel like that's what this franchise has to do to continue to evolve and stay fresh. They have the benefit of basically having that be handed to them by the fact that the genre in general in real life is constantly evolving. It's in a completely different place compared to 1996. And I think the same is true from uh, comparing it to 2011 in Scream 4. So they, they have a lot of creative possibilities if this is their approach to it. That is the biggest thing for me about Scream 4 even. Uh, you know, if you watch them all in order, the time between Scream and Scream 3 is not very long. There wasn't that much for the genre to actually evolve into. So you kind of had three movies that played in their own sandbox. And why I think Scream 4 is the best of the sequels is because it gets to play with so many new toys and it gets to do that reinvention that the first Scream did. Like the first Scream was such a statement maker when it came out because it was able to take a place in time in horror history and completely throw it on its head and have fun with it. The two sequels were trying to do the same in the same period. Mm -hmm. Then you have Scream 4, which is all about reboot, remake culture. It's all coming into the screen life stuff too. You have the YouTube angle. Like there were so many things it could play with and it does it all so well. And yeah. now you're telling me that you're, you get another basically decade between those movies. The new one has, just think about even what horror has come into in, in the recent time. Like you can play with the elevated nature. You can play with all of these things and there's just so much they can do. There's so much, and that's why I'm excited. It's a, it's a very, very good point. Um, speaking of ranking the Scream movies, do you know who has the same list as you? Allison Brie. <laughs> so. Yeah, so you know I'm right. So we, you know I'm right. We just, and you know I'm like a shit liar, too. So we just, uh, we recorded a Collider Ladies Night for Happiest Season, which I absolutely loved. I'll give you guys an official review soon. But at the beginning of the movie, at the beginning of the movie, at the beginning of the interview, we were talking about cats and I told her Deputy Dewey, blah, blah, blah. And then she gave me her rankings for the screen movies. And obviously mine dribbled out as well. But in all honesty, my rankings truly are scream, then scream two. But I mean, like, right, right behind it is scream four. It's like all of those are on a very, very high tier. And and even though I have a very soft spot in my heart for Scream 3, like I know the quality is night and day, yeah. but Scream, Scream 2, and Scream 4 are very, very good movies. They are. They're very, yeah. I I'm. I think there's a little bit more of a gap for me between 4 and 2, but like it's still not like, a, they're still all movies I enjoy tremendously. I just think one, like 1 and 4 to me are almost, almost on the same level they're not on the same level but almost on the same level of reinvention and that's why i think i hold four so much higher i understand that scream four just like widely needs more credit than it gets it, it just it really it, bums me out when people say i like, think it came out at the wrong time i think no. people were really i think people were really sick of reboots remakes and all these things so scream kind of was at the back end of like I mean, I've, I've been, I'm doing a column on Blight Disgusting. I keep mentioning like where I compare remakes and stuff like that. And I'm doing so many mid 2000 remake, mm -hmm. uh, basically reassessments right. because we forget that how many of them came out in the mid 2000s. So now you have Scream 4, which kind of like you just said, 2011. So it's on the tail end of that whole, I guess we'll call it a movement. And I think people were just sick of it. I, I think the horror community especially was sick of it because- everyone was really coming down on reboots and remakes. And that's around the time when the conversation was originality is dead. I, I think Scream 4 is incredibly original, but to the outsider and to most people, it was just another Scream movie. Why do we need this? Okay. I, I can, I can kind of understand that. I think uh, this is Scream 4 is one of those situations where I have to realize I'm, I'm a diehard obsessed fan and I was in a very small bubble when that movie came out where it was my everything. So it consumed my world. I, but when you put it that way, I can understand why some people blocked it out. Also, wait, I want to, okay, wait, I want to go back to the fun question really quickly. And the, the, the fun, the fun conversation about kills. Cause at 5.06, oh, oh, I, I, I saw this. A fun, a oh, fun sorry. In the live chat. Oh like, yeah. No, you're, this has been terrible. Why did you bring this up, Harry? Why are we talking about street? Um, no, but Corey said at 506, oh, okay. uh, are there slasher movies that the kills aren't fun? Isn't that part of the genre? And here is what I will 
argue. And here's what I'll say to that. I think there was a period where slasher movies were all about fun. And I think that was like the 80s, obviously, uh, or late 70s, maybe not even late 70s. I think the 80s is when that kind of, we'll call them like the trash for piece kind of slashers, but that's when slashers became about the kills and became about fun. And as horror evolved and we got away from that, I think we're now entering the realm where slashers are less about fun and more about making a statement in a way. I would uh, the, more about the message and the statement. And I think that's the difference when I watch new age slashers. The new age slashers we're seeing are just more gruesome. They're more vile. They're more violent in the sense that we feel the deaths more versus the old 80s slashers. Yeah, we laughed as people died. I mean, I rewatch how many of those and I laugh when people die because they're ludicrous. They're insane. They're also practical effects that look cheesy at times. And they're also practical effects that look like a like literally plastic is being killed. Yeah. We don't get that anymore. Things are more realistic. Things are more technically advanced. I think that's I think that's where the fun is kind of like dissipating. And now we have the new age of slashers. I that's that's kind of no, that's true. It's like when I think about some of uh the Friday the 13th movies that I like rewatching, like, you know, I don't know, Manhattan and stuff like that. Love Manhattan. It look, like the kill the kills are absurd. I'm not taking them seriously. And yes, in that in that instance, maybe I can apply the idea of having fun watching someone die just because it's so outlandish. But, but we're not uh, having fun watching someone like we're not having fun with the death. We're having fun with the with death it. itself. It's it's with the uh the craftsmanship behind, you know, the movie magic of showing the death. I think yes. that's where the word fun applies, but I still don't I still don't think in any other case, like even in a final destination with the most ridiculous kill in the world, I don't think it's ever about the fun. I think my enjoyment of slasher movies in particular and, you know, horror in general comes from this thrill that I get out of seeing the step like you were saying before, like the steps paving the way to the kill. It isn't an actual like fun enjoyment or relishing in the kill itself. I think that's and that's the difference. <laughs> but that's the difference though, because yeah. when you watch Jason Takes Manhattan, as Mira Domains has just brought up, when Julius Gaw gets his head boxed off by Jason, that's fun. I'm sorry. When a man gets his head boxed off by a, a slasher villain, oh, yeah. that is fun because it's not supposed to be serious. It is supposed to be absolutely ridiculous. Yeah, no, I I think that's that's probably the key of it right there. I'm glad I'm glad I brought that up now. Apparently it was discussion worthy after all and not just something weird I was obsessing over. I mean it could be both. 